You know, that's, that's, that's the truth. The old, the old person did not die when a new person was born. And there's a constant struggle that goes on inside of a Christian. And that's what being born again is all about, is a growth. And whereas a baby is born and uh, they grow physically and they learn everything that they're going to learn to do in the first five years of their life. They learn to walk, they learn to eat, they learn to talk all those basic things. Uh, they s still struggle learning things the rest of their lives. And we're, some of us are up in our age and there's still things that we're, we're learning. And as I've said before, the physical things in this life mirror the spiritual things. Where a baby is born and grows and struggles. When we're born spiritually, we grow and we struggle. I've been saved since 1975. And uh, well, I can go back to that day just as clear in my mind as if I was right there right now on that bus. <sighs> Looking out that window up in that sky that had clouds in it, the sun was shining, talking to God and telling him, here I am. If you're out there, God, I want you to have me. And you know, there's not, there's not any special, you know, the Bible says to call in the name of the Lord. And there's not any special thing that you've got to say. A, there's a special thing you got to do with your heart. And that's your heart has to reach out to God. And it has to want Him to come in and live and to be there with you. And we grow and we learn and we grow and we learn a little bit more. And life sometimes is, it's a roller coaster. You're up one moment spiritually and you're down the next moment spiritually. And it's, and, and it's, no, it's no different between the folks who sit out in the congregation to the man that's up here preaching the Word of God. I've got, I've got those roller coasters going on in my life. The only difference between the, the, the man of God and the, the person out there is he's up here doing this and you're not. That's really the only... He, he's, he's seen something, God sees something in that person that their, 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 their abilities and talents that God has given them to be able to, to, to do these things. And uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It really is on this side to be able to do this. I would not, I would not want to be doing anything else in my life. I have done a lot of things. I've worked in concrete, and I knew that I wasn't going to do that the rest of my life. I have worked on airplanes. I have worked on cars. I was 15 years old. I was pulling engines and transmissions and tearing them down and putting them back together again and putting them back in the car. I've been a manager. I've been a supervisor. And now I'm a pastor of a church. And now I'm a president of a seminary. And I wonder sometimes how in the world did I ever get here? Because it's not something that I ever wanted. I never sought to be where I am. God is my witness. I have never put my blinders on and said, that's what I want. That's the position I want. That's where I'm going to be. 
in a certain given time frame. I've never done that. Oh, when I was in the military, the uh, uh, going through my first three stripes and up to the buck sergeant there, uh, I didn't care, you know. I'd take a test, and I didn't care if I passed it or not, you know. But then I, I met that young lady there, and we began to, to, to start thinking about getting married, you know, and the family and all that, and all of a sudden, responsibility was there, you know. So I studied for staff sergeant for E5, and uh, uh, got got that one and studied for. So I, so I had a goal there, you know, because the more stripes you made, the the more uh, the more money you had. But but the more stripes you got, the more responsibility you get too. So, but you know, I guess what I'm trying to say is, there's a man over. Uh, there's a there's a story over in chapter 14 of the book of Luke, if you'll turn there. In, in verse 7, the Lord, I'm going to let you keep your seats because I'm just, I just want us to be kind of informal tonight. I just, I just feel the uh, Lord leading that way. In verse 7 of chapter 14 of the book of Luke, it says, And he, speaking of Jesus, put forth a parable to those which were bidden when he marked how they chose out of the chief room, saying unto them, When thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him. And he that bade thee and him uh, come and say to thee, Give this man place, and thou begin with shame to take the lowest room, but when thou art bidden, bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room, that when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher. Then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. Then said he also to him that bade him, and, and we'll, stop, we'll stop right there because that goes to a different thing there. You know, I'm sure that we probably can, uh, in, our, in our workplaces and that each of us have worked in, maybe, maybe just in some family members, you know, they, uh, we've seen some people who, They'll, they'll do anything that they can to get position. Uh, I, I worked out at uh, General Dynamics Lockheed, and it just, it appalled me. You really saw the mask come off of people when the word layoff came around. Uh, they would just stab people in the back to make sure that they kept their job and you lost yours. You know, they wanted to make sure that the, the boss man or woman knew that you, I'm the one that you want to keep, you know, don't lay me off. And, and uh, um, it, it was just, uh, it was appalling to me to, to see that kind of, of attitude coming out of people that I didn't think was in them. You know, but you know when you get into desperate straits, sometimes I guess the the real person comes out of people. You know, and so I've, I've just never I've never really uh, been that way to 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 do the things that show the boss that hey you want to keep me. Uh, I have four commendation medals from the military. Now, you've been in the military, and uh, you've been in, in the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force, okay? And you've been in the Army. It was... Pro it, 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 it was unusual for somebody to get one. 
those weren't just given out. You, you had to be uh, above and beyond. But you know, that's, and you've seen me around here, and that, that's just the way I am. And that, that's the reason why God uses me, because He's put that ability in me. It's not nothing that I do. But I, I liked it because it gave me 12 more points to get the next strike. Amen. It's four points for each commendation medal. But what I'm, what I'm saying, what I'm trying to say here is, I'm, I'm not saying look at me and look at what I did. What I'm saying here is, is what, we, what we need to learn to strive to do is to, to be humble. To abase ourselves. And, and God will raise you up. He'll make sure that those things happen in your life. You don't have to, you don't have to do it. But that's, that's one of the many things in life that we think that we've got to get involved in to make happen, you know. When in reality, really, there's only one thing that we've got to be doing as Christians in our walk with God. Actually, two things. We've got to be where God wants us to be, where we know He wants us to be, and number two, we've got to be doing what we know He wants us to do. And if you're doing those two things, God's going to take care of the rest of it. I'll guarantee you He is. And, and when you're in, the, in, in that place doing what you're supposed to be doing, doing it faithfully. Faithfully. A lot of people don't know what that word faithful means. They, a lot of people think that, okay, I can, I can do it a few times and then skip a couple of times and then do it a few more times and then maybe skip two and a few more times and just keep doing it. That's not faithfulness. Faithfulness is doing it time and time and time and time and time again. That's faithfulness. If, if we with our husbands or with our wife, if we ever go out on them, we are no longer, no longer, we can never make that up as being faithful to our wife or to our husband. It's just, it just can't happen. It won't happen. And God looks at those things in our lives to be faithful, just to be there when He would want us to be there and just to do what He would ask, uh, what, what He asks us to do. And He never asks us anything to do anything that He, he, he won't. He's going to always provide the means. He's going to always provide the way for you to be able to do that. All, all we've got to do is just step out on faith and, and do it. Believing and trusting and knowing that God is the one that is instigating this and He's the one that's got all of the supplies and everything that's going to be able to do it. All He's got to do is He's got to have that human instrument. And that human instrument is you and me. He's always done that. God did it with Jesus Christ. He, he, he wanted the world to know how to get saved. And He used the human instrument of Jesus Christ Himself to tell us how to get saved and then after we got saved, how we're supposed to live. He used, then He used men like Paul and Peter and Timothy and all those men to be able to write these things down in the Word of God that tells us how we're supposed to be able, how we're supposed to live, and what we're to do and what we're not to do, when to do it and when not to do it. And all we've got to do is just learn those things and then just abide by those things. And, and really, it's not hard to do. Yeah, we have the flesh that's constantly battling against that. We have Satan and his demons that are constantly battling against that, but we battle back. Ephesians chapter, chapter 6. There's, there's armor that we can wear if we'll just put it on and, and use that armor that God gives us. But most of all, 
following the Lord, seeking His will, seeking to understand what it is in our life that God really wants us to do. And then knowing, and everything that we do, folks, is by faith. And, and yes, it's, it's difficult, but, but it's not. I'm, my, I'm, still having, I'm still having a hard time. We were, we were I know we've got to move. We've, we've got to move. I know that. That's, that is a given right now. But I don't know what we're to do. We were turned down uh, on uh, uh, buying a house. I was approved at first and then turned down. But then uh, I don't know whether to go in and try that again in a, in a different uh, uh, agency or, or uh, to go out and rent or, or what we're to do, okay? And so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, and I'm just pouring this out to you because I'm, I struggle like you do, okay, with things. I don't know what to do, but when you don't know what to do, you know what you do? Wait. And that's hard. That's harder than anything else we do is wait. It is. You're fighting constantly with him or her. Amen. Some of, you, some of you know what I'm talking about. And so when it's not clear in your heart's eye which way to go, just stay put right there, right now. Wait. Wait. And I'll guarantee you, and, and you know the reason why you're waiting? Because God knows it's not time. God is omniscient. He knows the right moment, the right place in our life when we're to move. But we look at these circumstances that surround our life and we begin to live our, right, our life around those circumstances and that's one of the places we get into trouble. Put those circumstances aside because I'll guarantee you Satan and his demons are going to throw those circumstances at you all over the place. Don't look at the circumstances. Wait. And I'll guarantee you God will give you a clear answer on what he knows is the right answer for you to do. That's why we get in trouble, though. We don't wait. We think, oh, I, this looks like the better of the three things that I could do, so I'm going to do this one here, and we do it, and we certainly get in trouble, and we mess things up in our lives, and not only our lives, but other lives also. When my wife and I left the Air Force, we left on faith. I didn't know what we were going to do. We made the decision to do that, and then God led us to be out there at that seminary. That was, that was back in, in uh, we, we, we moved out there on December the 17th of 1987, because I got out in January of 1988, January the 1st. And I did not know, I wasn't even looking uh, to be the president. I wasn't searching. I, don't, I didn't want the position. I don't want it now. And you know why I don't want it now? Because I don't want the responsibility. And you may smirk and may laugh, but you wouldn't want it either, amen. Yeah. Yeah. But I did not go to Dr. Beck and say, hey, put me in that position. He came to me. Do you want that? I said, no, at first. Yeah. I, <laughs> he waited two years. He was wanting to retire. He waited two years because Dr. Beck is a very wise man. And he knew that God wanted me to be there. 
But I didn't know it yet. He had to wait two years. He told us that the other night. It is, yeah. So, so he, had, he had to wait, you know. When, when it came time to vote just before the, the uh, church councils had to vote on who they were going to vote in the president there, there was one guy that, uh, that works in the school and uh, he wanted so to be the president. And he made sure that he shuttled Dr. Beck around did things for him, you know, he's, he's buttering him up, okay. And come time, almost for the vote, he went to Dr. Beck and said, could you put me in as a president, nominate me? And Dr. Beck told me, he said, no. And I'm sure the guy was probably surprised, you know, and... Uh, Later, Dr. Beck told me he wouldn't even make a... Well, I'm not going to tell you what he said, but it was funny. But he was right, you know. But what I'm, what I'm saying, I'm, I'm using this to go along with the illustration here in what we read in the Bible. How, how, how many people do we know, have we seen over the years, you know, that that's how that's how they work things in their life. They 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 don't live that life of a Christian in such a way that they depend upon God. They depend upon man. They depend upon the government. They depend upon the world to for them to be able to prosper, uh, to be promoted, and things like that. So they so their their mindset is that, and they wouldn't know how to wait on the Lord, and they wouldn't know how to uh, depend upon God because they're depending upon all those other things there in the world. And consequently, I'm feeling that from him now because he didn't get that position I did. And I, that's neither here nor there, okay, for me. But it, what I'm saying is it's sad because He's, he's going around now, and, and he's not doing it, but I mean, I've, I've known him long enough, I can sense it. He's moping be, around because he's not where I, I, I am, okay? And folks, that's not the attitude to have. Because I guarantee you, if God thought that he would be the one that needed to be there, he would be there. And, and nothing in heaven and nothing in hell could have prevented it. That's right. God's providence. Boy, you need to study that up. I, it's hard. It's hard to understand His providence. It's hard for me to grasp the point that, that we have free choice. And God does not make me choose this or that. But yet, his providence, the reason that I'm at the seminary now as the president is, and the, the reason I'm here as the pastor is because of God's prominence, uh, providence. And so I, I, I don't quite, and I probably never will until I see him, I don't quite grasp that, okay, I've got free will, but yet you rule me yeah. in your providence, you know. Yeah. That's hard to comprehend, okay? But I, I do know this. I do know that everything that God does is perfect, it's right, it's whole, it's just. Amen. I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, seek God first in everything that you do. Don't try to sell yourself to anybody. You just be who you are doing what you do. And God will take care of the rest of it. I'm 
I'm happy for this man right here next Monday going, going to work in this economy and everything. That, that's a blessing from God. I know he loves the Lord. I know his family loves the Lord. And that's one of the main reasons why these things are happening to them is because they, they want what God wants for them. And we can say that we want what God wants for us, but yet, is that how we really are living? Our lives, each, each and in, every one of us, our lives should be such that when people are around us, they sense something about us that's not like that world out there. They know that we're not, they, they know that we're different. And, and they, then they sense that and they see that and they, 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 they want to they wanna know, they're curious in, in a sense that, okay, this is different from the everyday things that I see, okay? And so they look into it, and then unfortunately sometimes when they say, oh, that's a Christian, okay, I don't want any part of that, so I'll just go back to this. And it's unfortunate for them, sadly. Because, as I said this morning, we have the Holy Spirit living within us, and we know that, and we know what the truth is. We know who we are. We know whose we are. And folks, just in and of itself there, how, how peaceful that is. What a peace fell on me that day when I gave my life to Christ, and I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew who I was. I knew what it was all about then. I'd been searching for so long as a child, as a kid, as a teenager, who I was, what I was here for, and I found it. And then I began to grow, as each of you did. What, what is it, Lord, you want me to do? You know, and I didn't, you know, when you're young, we, we do the same thing spiritually that we did as kids. I keep, <laughs> it's so funny. I hear, I hear parents talk about their kids and how, uh, rebellious they are at the age of 13 and 14 and everything, and I stand there and I think, well, you were the same way. You know, every one of us were. We go through those stages of growing. Part, it's part of life. And hopefully, though, and, and unfortunately, some of them don't grow out of that. But hopefully, we do. Most of us do, some, some don't. And, and unfortunately, that's the same in our spiritual walk with the Lord in Christianity. Some Christians get to a point, and that's, that's it. They won't grow anymore. Because every time, every time, every time that God gets, places you in a growth spurt, there has to be a sacrifice has to be a sacrifice on your part. And with every one of us, it's something, it's, it's something different, something that's, that's, that's holding us right there where we cannot move forward. And we, God, know, of course, knows what it is, and God has to deal with us, and that is completely up to us as to whether we get past that point or not. And I guess that's where... That's where Preachers and pastors and people like that come, come in play because they have gotten past those things. They've grown. They want to. They want to get that. And, and all it is, folks, is getting that closer walk with God. Getting that closeness with Him. And you'll never get as close as you can to God in this life. Oh, I want to, I want to one day be like John the beloved and lay my head on the breast of Jesus and tell him how much I love him for saving my soul and doing what he's done to me for me in this life. That's one of the things I want to do, the first thing I do when I do when I get to heaven. 
because I was like a lot of other people. I was on my way to hell, and I was on drugs, and I was on alcohol, and I was doing a lot of things that I shouldn't be doing. Like you said this morning, I would have gone to hell. But God, but God, He's got a lot of butts, Amen. He's got yes, yes, and I'm I'm thankful for that, Amen. And I know I know there's a lot of Christians who are hurting out there. And I tell, I tell the folks who've lost their husbands, they've been married for 40, 50, 60 years, and they lost their husband, they lose their wives. And I let them know, I say, well, I know it's sad, I know it's hard, but now, if you'll let it, if you'll allow it, Jesus Christ can be your husband, he can be your wife. He can be that one that's near to you, that's close to you. It's sad that some Christians, it's not all in my eyes, some Christians, they look at Christianity as, as a struggle for them, as it, it, it's a heartache for them to have to go through, but for for many it's not. For many it is it is a blessing. Uh, to be, don't 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 you remember the first time that your children took that first step? And what a thrill that was when they took that first step. And and then they started walking. And then, remember that remember that first day they went to school. You know what a thrill that was. I know it was it was kind of hard to let them go, but then, man, my kids growing up. You know, my kids growing up. And those were exciting times. They really were. And the the thing is, though, is those those times in our own life. They can be exciting times for us. Hey, I, I took my first step here. I, I stepped out on faith and I did this. Thank you, Lord, for, for giving me the grace and the understanding to be able to do this. And you know what that does? That encourages me the next time that I have to do it. And I work, God works with me like we worked with our kids on baby steps. And then we begin down the line here, we take those big steps. We're able to do that now. And we will continue to grow and we will continue to live by faith until we see Jesus Christ face to face. And then, no more. We will be at rest. And what a rest that will be. God bless you. Strive to live for Jesus with all of your being, with all of your soul. Yes, you've got some things going on in your life, and yes, it crushes you if you'll win it. If you don't, though, you can have a wonderful and a great relationship with Jesus Christ. And that relationship is like no other relationship that you will ever have on this side of heaven. It'll be the best blessing that you'll ever have with any person, with anybody, with anything. So I encourage you to quit worrying, quit thinking about the things in the past. That's exactly what Satan wants. You know, you know what I said this morning about 
about worrying about tomorrow and we take tomorrow's problems and we bring them back, we bring them on today, that can work the other way. The things of the past, we try to bring them in on today also and we keep, we keep them with us and they keep us in a burdened situation to where we're no use to God. Let the past go. Because we cannot bring the past back. The only person who can bring that past back is God, if He chose to. We're not going to do it. No matter how much we worry, no matter how much we fret about it, we cannot bring that back. No, no more than we can change the future to make it what we want it to be. We can't do it. So what do we do? Right now, in this moment, in this time, we live for the Lord. We trust the Lord with everything. And then the next moment, we do the same thing. And then the next moment, we do the same thing. That's how God wants us to live. But Satan knows that, and he will keep those things on your mind. He will keep you down, trying to get you to think about those things and dwell on those things. So that you can't, so God cannot use you for His glory. And I want to be used for His glory because, folks, there is, there is no, there is nothing that I can give back to God. Not that He wants anything back, He does not want anything whatsoever for giving me that freedom of salvation that He so freely gave on the cross of Calvary for me. But I heard a message during our preaching at the graduation. And one of the preachers said this, when we get saved, we are indebted. We have a debt to pay. And that debt is telling others about Jesus Christ and how He's made our life great and everything. How are we going to do that when we're always living in the past in our pity and in our future, in our worry? We can't do that. We're, we're, we cannot be used of God near as much as we could be if we were right there with God, not worrying, not fretting, not concerned about those things. Let God take care of those things. What I said a while ago, wait, just wait on God. Wait on Him. Let, let, let Him take care of those things, and He will. It may take years. I've heard, of, I've heard of women praying for their husbands for 20 years for their salvation, and they finally got saved. Thank the Lord. It was worth that 20 years of them praying and, and waiting that they did get saved. Amen. Wait on God because He knows the right time, the right place. Don't promote yourself. Let God promote you. And I'll guarantee you He'll promote you to a better position than you ever thought about being in. Amen. Amen.